It's the beginning of day two and rather nerve-wrackingly that's also our final day and although we got an immense amount done yesterday there's still a huge amount to do isn't there Derek? That's right we've only got a matter of hours to finish the excavation and yes we made incredible progress yesterday we got two of the quadrants down we've revealed some of the interior of the sarcophagus but what we still need to do is incredibly important we need to get down underneath that sarcophagus and see if we can identify any pristine soils that haven't been exposed since the Roman times. And what I'd like to do too is to really understand how the coffin works, how the, how the base works, how the lid works, how the clips that hold the two together work. And I've got to start off with the most nightmarish jigsaw puzzle without a picture to help me, putting all those stones back together to see if we can reconstruct the lid. It's an awful lot of work to do and the clock is ticking. Yes, don't, don't, don't count the hours, it's too scary. The sun is back out and it's the second and last day of our dig. Given their complex history, we have been stunned by the extraordinary state of preservation of the bones. So I decided to do some chemical analysis to see if we could better understand their story. Naomi. Hi. <laughs> That's good timing. It is good timing. I've just found the kneecap. Oh, wow. I was just about to ask if I could step in and analyse some bone. Is, oh, it a, is it a good time? It is a good time. <laughs> okay. We've got um, plenty of them now. Let's have a look. What I thought I'd do is see how much lead's in the bones, because we obviously know we've got a lead-lined coffin. Yeah. And I'm intrigued to see how much contamination we've got. I think it, that's probably helped protect these bones. Yeah, so we've, I, I've never seen a lead reading this high on human remains. It's over one and a half percent lead in the bones themselves. So that is, that is significant contamination. And I wonder if that, those kind of levels of lead will sort of inhibit bacterial growth and things like that, which may, may sort of, may have helped keep the bones in this good condition for so long. Hey, that's the bottom. You got the bottom, Pete? Yeah, got the bottom. Wow. wow. That's, that's deep, isn't it? That's deeper than I thought it was. That is a so serious much. sarcophagus, isn't it? Oh, so yeah. much deeper than the interior, isn't it? Yeah. Can, can you imagine production. the weight of that then? If, if that, that is shallow that inside. Of base. Yeah. I mean, whoever put that in, they did not want it going anywhere, did they? Absolutely great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whew. Oh, well done, Pete. John, you were here when this stone coffin was originally discovered, weren't you? In, in 1963, was it? Yeah, 63, yeah. 59 years ago. Yeah. So cast your mind back. What can you remember about it? Did it, did it look like this? Yes, well, but they didn't dig as deep as this then. Mm -hmm. They sort of cleared the top off. We, we, we cleared the top off and took it away and threw it in the old quarry. What, the, the lid? The lid, yeah. We smashed the old lid up with, with an iron bar and it was thrown on a trailer and taken away. Why because, did you do that? Well, because it was so near the surface, the stone and that off it would have got in the machinery. Oh, the, so the you cleared and that it. cleared it, yeah. So what do you think is all this stone that we've found? I, I mean, I look don't, behind you, it's nearly a whole lid. I don't really know. Oh. But the, it was nowhere near as thick as that, the lid. It was just about three and a half, four inches thick. Oh, this is mystery upon mystery. It is, it yes. is. Yes. Yeah. So when you found the original lid, was it still in place with the with the clips? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because I only knocked the bottom corner off. Pete. Hey, how you doing, Dad? I'm all right. I think we might have to make some decisions soon. Mm. I think let, let's focus on on the box that we've got producing. Mm -hmm. um, what we have got from the cut you've excavated so far is that lovely image of it in plan, which yeah. will come from Adam's uh, drone imagery. Mm -hmm. um, and that's given us that spatial sort of layout uh, of the cut associated with it. Whereas the box now is, is giving us this wonderful vertical stratigraphy. So we're getting that sequence mm -hmm. of events yeah, yeah. Uh, coming through. It's of uh, interest, I, I've just been looking at the section Ivan's been digging out here. Uh, and I'm increasingly under the impression that, that the cut is much wider on this side than we previously thought it was. It almost looks like it's in at an angle as well. And looking mm. at, looking at the, the depth for this sarcophagus that is a huge weight that must there's I no way that's been imagine, lifted in yeah. like this has it no it no, must have no. been pushed in down a slope no i i mean we're, we're talking about the transportation and, and maneuvering of this would have been a serious logistical challenge i mean that is at least twice uh, the thickness of stone to 
sarcophagus, isn't it, to, to cavity. Well, we haven't got to the bottom <laughs> of the inside yet. We'll see. But, uh, but yes, certainly, it looks it based on uh, the previous excavation. So could we, could we 3D model this and get an estimation of weight based on the density of stone that's under there, do you think? Yeah, yeah. And talk to yeah. Matt and see what we can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean... I mean, that is the shame about not having the box on the other side, because then we would have a full photographic profile. Mm. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I think we just haven't got the time for it, okay. uh, actually. So we'll concentrate on this mm. side. We'll record that in plan. We've got the nice, we've got the line of the cut. We can follow that round at the end of the day with yeah. a nice drone shot, but use this to get our sample underneath, which yeah. is what we really need, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been quite lucky here. We've got the tall markings on mm. the external face of the sarcophagus. Mm. We've got the brackets yeah. uh, carving through here. Um, so, you know, it has provided us quite some information. Using Matt's 3D model, we're able to calculate that the sarcophagus would have likely weighed around 3.8 tonnes. That's the same weight as your average pickup truck. As the dig continues, the sieving team are working hard, going through the spoil and looking for residual materials. Looks like you're starting to get some full long bones exposed there, Naomi. Yeah, we have, Derek. We've got uh, we've got a fever coming up here. We've got, it's not quite sure what this is here, but it's definitely more bone. Some more popping up here. And I, again, the preservation is still it's amazing, isn't it's it? It's really good to say it's been in and out and messed about with. So now you're starting to get these full long bones exposed. Are you getting a sense of the stature of this individual? Well, probably smaller than me, which is saying something since I'm four foot nine and three quarters. I mean, it's, I know it's probably too early to talk about age of death, but could this be quite a young person? Um, I mean, the original sort of report said she was about 30 years old um, and, and not until I've got everything out I can have a proper look I'll be able to see if that is a, around about a right age yeah. estimation. Did the Romans have any strong beliefs about what happened to the person's spirit or, or was death just the end? So for pagan Romans you know sort of Mediterranean tradition has everything between two extremes of a spectrum could be this is absolutely the end there is nothing after this or it could be a kind of complex sort of afterlife of the kind we know about from the Greco-Roman mythology about crossing the river Styx, paying your coin to the ferryman, living in bliss or, or in damnation. Depending on how good Depending or bad you've been. Depending on your mean. life. I mean, the middle ground is probably the more common view. So we have on Roman tombstones of an earlier period, the invocation of the manes, it always, the tombstones often start, dis manibus, to the spirits of the dead. And the manes there, the dead in general, but they're also your forebears, your ancestors. You know, they're there and present. Mm -hmm. So at commemorative ceremonies, you'll make an offering to them. You know, you might put some food and drink by the coffin, even in the coffin, if there's a uh, means of doing that. Oh, one of these mad feeding tubes. Exactly, tubes. one of these feeding tubes that you see yes, going down yes. into the coffin. So you can coffin. pour things actually in. Yes, yeah. because it's important. It's important because it's perpetuation of those emotional bonds, though that affection persists beyond death, but also because it kind of keeps the dead in their place. It's quasi-sacrificial. So the manes remain the manes and they remain at a distance and you're now part of the living community and you don't want to be polluted by them. Yeah, gosh. So it's sort of, it's trying to have their cake and eat it in some ways. You know, this is a person, it's bereavement. These are dearly loved people, but they're also now, they're dead and they're a corpse. Mm and they're becoming part of this wider group of yes. spirits. We're starting to get a much better impression of what was inside the grave, but Helen is trying to figure out what happened above it, giving her a very complicated jigsaw puzzle. What is this? What are we gonna do with it? What does it mean? This lot of stones, nicely shaped, got a good top to them, are twice as thick as this lot. Mm. And then Claire, you spotted those ones, yes, didn't you? Yes, the tool marks here are very different to some of the very flat there, and those are much more like the edge of the coffin, the way that the stones work there. Yeah, they're like the sides, yes, aren't like they? Yes, like the sides. Whereas this is like the, 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 the beautifully tooled top. Mm -hmm. So we've got two different treatments. I mean, never mind, because we've got two yes. different treatments in the, in the coffin. And then John the farmer dropped an absolute bombshell when he told us that in 1963, 
the lid, of course, which is the area they'd hit with the plough, it was a danger to, to his farming mm -hmm. machinery. So they removed the lid, broke it into pieces, and took it down to, to the farm and buried it down there. So it's, it's, it, it, it's not here to be found. While the team carry on digging, Keith has been metal detecting around the sarcophagus and has found some interesting pieces of lead work. Yes, that. Yeah, shall we? Uh... Oh, yes, look at that. That is beautiful, Keith. Wow, that's got some real weight to it, it has, hasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got something very similar to this, actually. We found when we did the, the box down the side of the sarcophagus. Yeah, uh, it's got the same shape here, isn't it? Where it's yeah. been moulded around the. Yeah, that looks to me as if these have been moulded around the. In fact, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same width as the brackets. That's interesting. I, I'm starting to wonder. I mean, if these are on each one, and when we found this one there, it was still in situ against the hole at the bottom of the bracket carving the that would have held the bracket into the sarcophagus. Ah, yes, I see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if these are functional, whether they're there to keep it in place, yeah. if they're decorative uh, to highlight the brackets themselves. But um, I don't know, great, great find, Keith. I mean, that's really, really nice to have two of them now. Looking at the excavation today, it's staggering how enormous that stone sarcophagus is. I mean, it's, it's twice as deep as it needs to be. Yeah. So that, imagine sort of in a, in a state of mourning, in a state of con contemplation with your family, the practicalities of having to get that thing into the ground. It's quite remarkable to imagine that process taking place in the past. Yes, because it's so difficult to, to lift and and move. It's sort of, I, I imagine, sort of when I, when I think of a funeral, I imagine a fairly serene process of <laughs> slowly lowering a coffin River into entry. a ground. Yeah. yeah, but the reality of that would have been quite different to that, I think. It would have been quite a, a bustle to get that in the ground in one piece. Yeah, and also the business of commissioning it. Are these things yeah. off the shelf ready to go, or do you have to have them made to measure? Uh, do you have to wait for somebody to, to knock one up? How difficult are they to make? Where's the stone coming from? And I'm wondering here, because ours is so roughly hewn, and it's, it's that, the, the extra depth of it even could be a sign that it was a bit of a rush job. It was done quickly for a, a person who went far before their time, an unexpected passing, if you will. We started to see charcoal almost mm. all the way around and then it got very clean. The backfill was incredibly clean after that. Right. So it could well be it was backfilled to the rim and then there was the cooking, feasting, taking place nearby and some of that charcoal found its way into yeah, the Yeah, it's got plant. trampled in. Yeah. Yes. When you get these back to your lab, what mm -hmm. sort of things are we going to be able to find out from it? Well, I'll firstly give them a nice clean so we can see the surface because obviously they're still the pre yes. well preserved but they're dirty mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then we get a chance to sort of see if there's any sort of pathologies mm -hmm. on there or so that's things like disease and evidence of disease and things like that yes yeah, so quite often in the sort of the hands and the feet we can see extra bony growth that could be arthritis right. okay yeah of course um but that's not always it's, it's not always the case because for bones to have these kind of markings on them, the person has had to sort of lived and suffered long enough for them to make their mark, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but I'm going to start, I pretend that I don't know anything about them. Sure. Start with aging, sexing. Um, we might even be able to get um, a height estimation. We can take okay. some metric measurement. Okay, so I'm getting the other half of the pelvis out. So we've got a little bit missing here, but I think we've got them. You know, there was fragments coming out before, sure. so that will all, be, it, it will fit, fit together. So that's so. the two bits you'll be able to put together, well, put back together now. Is, is it really the pelvis that's going to give us the best idea with regards to it's, the texting? It's one of the indicators, one of the main indicators. Once we put the pelvis together, you see there's like a an arc um, and it's much wider in females so I've got the last piece now well, well done what, what's that bit uh, well this so it's a weird looking bit 
But here we've got. So this is your sacrum. Ah, so at the bottom. seat bone, is that the same thing? Well, well you know, you have your coccyx, you'll know if you've ever sat, fell awkwardly, that's right. really, really painful. Yeah. For, so this is the, this ah, is the part okay, that we've got. Right. So your, your pelvis comes either side of this. So, so then that's great. I mean, like, again, another really, really well preserved. Once you finish looking at the bones in the lab, then is, is the plan to bring them back and reinter them? Absolutely, 100%. And I think it would be nice since it's been a bit jumbled in here to lay, lay it back mm. out in anatomical. <laughs> position oh, yeah, yeah. Good. it feels just as rough underneath as it is on the side with a fairly irregular sort of corner edge here so unlike its opposing end it's got a lovely finish as with the sides where it can't be seen the efforts not been necessarily placed into the craftsmanship at last, we've got our soil sample from underneath the sarcophagus, ready to go off to the lab for examination. It's the end of day two, and we have found out so much more about our burial. I'm particularly pleased that we've found bones in good condition, so we're going to be able to confirm the age and the sex of the body in the grave. And I'm so pleased we can finally see the whole profile of the sarcophagus. And I'm staggered at how deep it is. It's almost twice the depth of the interior. To have the opportunity to see the coffin in situ, to understand how the grave was made, the coffin placed in, the lid put on, that's so rare for these kinds of Roman burials. Usually they've been found and used as horse troughs in a farmyard. Mm. And working on the, on the lid, uh, discovering that there's so much extra stone, we were wondering if maybe some of it would, could even have been a, a marker so that you'd know exactly where to come back to. We even managed to see the, the amazing iron staples that held the lid on. And what's particularly lovely is we can leave some archaeology in situ for future archaeologists to investigate. Mm. And the rediscovery of this burial has meant quite an odyssey for its occupant. She's been from here to Oxford, back in a local farmhouse, put back again. We've examined her here and after uh, osteological examination, we'll be able to rebury her and hopefully placate the Marnes. They're happy that they've got their ancestor back with them here. Yeah, I think we should, uh, we should pour her a large glass of wine. I think that is going to keep her happy. Since filming, Naomi has continued to investigate the biography of Our Lady. She's discovered what appears to be a V-shaped cut mark and a hairline crack on one of the bones in her hands. These types of marks, often seen as a result of defensive injuries, could have been caused by an impact prior to her death. However, more detailed microscopic analysis is needed to be sure. She's also uncovered some important articles which could allude to what has happened to the skull following reinterment. If rediscovered, it could give us the opportunity to do some analysis and potentially see where she came from. Her story is far from over. Join Time Team on Patreon to access exclusive 3D models, masterclasses and behind-the-scenes insights.